Okay, so engine mounts. As you can see, the bolt screws through facing forward. So the bolt head is aft on the passenger side and it's opposite on the driver's side. On the driver's side, the bolt goes through there with the bolt head forward facing aft. I think now that we've got the crane on, the bonnet's up as far as we can go. Hopefully I don't need to take off the bonnet. Um, you can see the crane. I've actually jacked the car up again further, as high as I could on axle stands. Um, pretty much everything's clear in the engine bay and we've got this weight um, approved strop. So this is strong enough. It's uh, load approved and that should give us the clearance to hopefully drop the engine down. The last thing will be is to disconnect the air comp uh, the AC compressor which is somewhere down there. So hopefully once I drop the engine I can disconnect the lines and then they'll just pull back up here and leave them there or disconnect the compressor complete off the engine and then tie it up in place here. So the plan is to drop the engine and then remove the compressor whilst the engine's still on the crew. Okay guys, so the engine is finally out of the GT4. I'll give you a quick walk around um, just to summarize the whole process. And then the next video will be on the actual teardown, overhaul and all that kind of stuff. So here it is. This is the 3S GTE engine out of the GT4. Um, basically engine, gearbox and transfer box all in one out of the car. And as you can see, it's pretty high off the ground. I had to end up using a jack as well over on the uh, uh, bar sway bar there and um, so you can see the jacks beside it hopefully from this angle yeah that's how much extra you have to go above um, and I also used the crane to get it up as well so there's a lot of jiggling and poking a couple of strops there as well and the uh, leveler bar so put those on the engine mounts just to lift the chassis because that's probably the strongest point you can see the, the rest of the prop shaft there in the centre of the screen. Um, really, this is where the fun bit begins. So I have to figure out now, move the wee Mazda out of the way. And we can figure out getting this into the garage. Start stripping her down, seeing what exactly is going on. As you can see, there's the alternator, all the pumps and auxiliary stuff on the side of the engine there. Um, we'll try and find exactly where it looks like we've found an oil leak already. Um, Yep, around the timing cover. So I'm guessing it's the camshaft or maybe power steering or something in that area. But we'll try and figure it out. Welcome back guys to the blog. So here is the engine on the engine stand, or sorry, on the crane. Um, gearbox is still attached, but I figured to try and get some access, I need to get start getting off some of this wiring loom and old hoses and things like that, just to try and let me get in there. Um, it's a bit complicated looking at the moment, so I think the plan is to strip back what we can um, because I need to be able to get my hands in there to around the bell housing bolt, so let's see how it goes. So we're still at it. I um, got some of the wiring loom off around the starter. <coughs> Took off the gearbox mount um, on the passenger side and then got one of the two bell housing bolts out there. But struggling with this other one, it's rusted in place really tight. And obviously, because it's threaded through either the gearbox or into the block, I have to be really careful. I don't shear it, so I'm just using WD-40. And 
going back and forth to the tram, free it up slowly with some oil. I'll do a wee time lapse just to see, hopefully, <laughs> how much effort this takes. But this is a real killer, and especially with the uh, hot weather at the moment, it doesn't really help. So I'll set that one up next. Okay, I've taken a breather from the time lapse. It's really hot, it's really humid, and this bolt does not want to come out. Um, you've probably seen me stop and lubricate it. Um, basically, every few turns, I'm trying to rock the bolt back and forward, so loosen it, tighten it, loosen it, tighten it. And the aim is, every time you're trying to loosen it a bit more, you go a little bit further on the angle on the wrench. Um, put blast a bit more WD-40 in there, take a breather, same again, and it's just basically millimeter by millimeter trying to get the bolt free and also get some of that rust out of the threads as you go without shearing it, and that's the um, the knack, you know, because if you shear that, you're pretty much screwed. Okay, so this bracket has six bolts and one of them had sheared in the block already. Goes in there on the bottom of the block on the crankshaft end um, and it connects up to the um, holes on here which is actually supporting the transfer box going across to the transmission. So that's slackened off, I can't see any more bolts. I think I just have to give the transmission a wiggle now and see if I can actually get it off. So we're on day two of the transmission removal. Um, from yesterday, it's hard to maybe see. There you can see one of the dials in the gearbox, which goes actually into the engine casing, the bottom end. So those two surfaces were actually flushed together. So we are making progress. It's about 50 mil. The manual says to pull it straight back out towards you, about um, 60 to 80 mil. I think that's pretty difficult. So, we're going to try and bring it out, then you have to twist it to the right and then lift it up at the bell housing. So that's the plan. Okay, so hopefully you were able to see from that last time lapse. Um, basically, that's it all split. What I didn't show you off camera was I realized that very strangely, you have like this old cover. It's just between the engine block and the gearbox. And its job is to then protect from the backside, the flywheel. Um, so you can't, it's just a flywheel cover, but it's a, crappy deformed piece of junk 
that sort of rattles about there and I think the previous owner had cross-threaded a bolt this one on the bell housing and um, so what I did was basically drill it out um, and of course naturally things don't go to plan the drill goes in at an angle and then um, luckily I was able to do it without damaging the mounting bolt for the starter but there's a wee bit of the drill there but that's okay I can dress that up with a file um, main thing is uh, this bolt isn't actually supporting any weight because it goes here and that's where the engine block ends so these are the two bolts you want to worry about so it's okay that was actually just a bolt keeping on that cover and to be honest I might just bin it I don't think it'll be go back on it really doesn't serve much purpose and to be honest if you're sticking your fingers in there when the engine's running and you're under the car you kind of deserve to lose a finger so um yeah that's about it so victory is mine happy days So that's the engine and gearbox out, separated and it's dangling on the crane at the moment. Um, the last challenge I found was off camera there, the uh, engine stand cradle, which is just here. You can adjust that, but the actual bolts that go through the gearbox and into the uh, block that we would need to use to secure the engine to the engine stand are too short. So. The actual pull, um, the supports in the engine stand are too long, the bolts are too short, so we can't actually bolt the engine stand cradle to the gearbox and the block there, or sorry, to the around the, the clutch area. So we're just gonna have to wait. I'll get online, figure out if we can get some longer bolts of the same pitch thread, and then basically once we can get it on the engine stand, we can pack away the crane and start. Uh, cleaning it up, splitting it apart and seeing what's going on. I think the next move now, um, easiest thing will be to bring probably the gearbox out and give it a degrease, clean it down. Um, there was no issues with that, just we had to get the gearbox off to do the clutch. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll uh, put a new throw out bearing on, new oil, that'll do it, give it a clean the paint. Um, engine I think everything is going to get done I have the feeling from the past that they've done the clutch um, because things have been fiddled with the engine stand or the engine mounts in the car have had fresh copper slip put on them and one other thing I found was removing the wiring loom this little sensor in here completely sheared off there so I need to find a water elbow with sensors or a new sensor from what I read online, that's the cool start warm up sensor, so it is pretty important anyway. Um, probably the next job once it's on the stand is start uh, manifold off, and then you can remove the rest of the engine wiring loom. And then all these hoses, and um, basically just start from there. But I think for now, that's enough today.